welcome to another episode of Sister to Sister. I'm Linda Williams, and this is a conversation between me and my sister Susan about the soul, about destiny, about life itself. Now we begin with part one of Say What? This is uh, a, a second round of Sister to Sister. And as we discussed what we would, uh, what our topic would be, I was leaning more toward leaving it open to what God would have to say to us. And Susan, definitely, with, uh, especially around some things that God been speaking to Susan Williams. I think what I want to do now is let's have a quick prayer that I'm going to ask you to lead. And then let's move into some things God's been speaking to you. Well, I'm glad to be here today, too. And, and Lord, we just want to come to you and ask you to take control. Um, yes, fill Lord. our mouths, fill our minds with your word yes, and your will, Lord. And, and that you would just um, anoint us to have truth and um, wisdom. And Lord, that you would get it to the into the right hands to the right ears, Lord God, yes. for people that are seeking answers from you, that are looking for truth, that are looking to um, find something beyond religion. Yes, Jesus. Um, and looking for the power of God. Father, I just mm. ask that for their sakes that you would anoint this and that you would use it um, according to your will and your plan. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love you so much, Susan. Um, as a matter of background for everybody listening to us, Susan has been on a whirlwind of increased discernment and Lord speaks to her in dreams and she is a prophetess. And what I love about my sister's um, calling in that regard is that she's not one of those out there with sensationalism she's not trying to tell you what your license plate number is what to wear next sunday she talks to the church as a whole on a regular basis with respect to where god's taken us and the thing about it is a lot of times susan goes through those things before the body of christ goes through them and to be close to Susan and watch the emotional turmoil that can cause, especially when it involves God uprooting some things from the past. It's just it's 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 heartbreaking at times for, for me to watch her go through that. But at the same time, it's so edifying and encouraging because I know that God loves us enough to allow us to go through certain things so that it'll test our metal, so to speak, builds up our character. And uh, Susan, you've called me a few times this week and we've talked, uh, we haven't talked at all as much as we used to by phone because you're working on school and everything, but what's on your heart to share today? Well, you know, um, we were talking that I go to a, a meeting with uh, other prophets. It's good to be around people who have the same calling because then you're free to express yourself and ask questions about things that you wouldn't normally ask people because they may not understand. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, going to those classes has really um, opened my eyes to a lot of things that I didn't realize I wasn't the only one that thought them or the only one that saw them. Or, and right now we're going through a book by uh, John Eckhart and in there he talks about the characteristics of prophets and things that they hate and things that they that they're like their weaknesses their strengths mm -hmm. and all of all of that and you know one of the hard-hitting themes that God is really speaking to me that I've been speaking to that group about is the words of our mouth oh. um, my mother has hit me literally harangued me about that ever since she got serious with God. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, to have somebody sit there and say that to you, but then it become a reality to you, it are two different things. Absolutely. And um, just recently, um, my daughter, she has some physical issues that she's suffered with for years. And um, the Lord just told me, you know, 
you you expect those things, and now you've gotten to the point where you speak that over her. Mm. And 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 he just really had me just he just put me into a, a time of intercession, where I just took all the words that I'd spoken in agreement with that thing, and I asked him to cast them down. And you know I'm I'm saying this from somebody who looked at that with a skeptical eye. Yeah. Even though the word says it. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't really see it, so you don't really get it. Right. The thing is, is we're living in so much of it right. that, that our lives are so saturated with the fallout from that that we've gotten comfortable with it. And that's why we don't believe the word. That's well, deep. the word doesn't care whether or not you're saturated in it and living in it. You can live in a relationship where you're getting your brains beat out. Yeah. You know, and God can be telling, can be telling you know, you through scripture that, you know, maybe you don't have to divorce the man, but you need to remove yourself from the middle of the the, the abuse. Right. But, you know, you you don't hear it because you've been saturated with this. Your mother was beat. You were beat. Your grandma yeah. was beat. And it doesn't change the word because of what we're living in and what we're comfortable with and what we accept doesn't change the word. Right. And so just, you know, by his spirit, and I'm going to say it was him. He just had me start dealing with all these things that I'd spoken over her and everything else. And I'm telling you, she is still freaking out because from that day, that day when I got home, uh, she was a different person. What? The pain was gone. She wasn't suffering like she had been. Um, it's just been an amazing just few days since that happened and um, shared it with my mother. My mother cried I mean, wow. because it's like... You know, yeah, she cried because she's been telling me that and telling me that and telling me that, you know, (laughs) and then, you know, to have it come to light and be real, because even in her life, even though she's been saying it, she's Mm -hmm. not really seen it. Okay. So to actually see a breakthrough in that area and the, the reality of the word works, the word is true. God, you know, just gave us another, uh, you know, like a, uh, uh, demonstration yeah you know openly yep. so and i felt like god did this this way because he didn't want me to ever walk away from this and go ever again go i'm not sure if that works i'm not sure how that works if that's real i've never seen it i mean he massages down in my bones i mean it was so overwhelming the difference yeah because that was a sudden and undeniable difference we're talking a 10 minute 10 minute difference 10 minutes of prayer to the actual full manifestation wow yep because she did fine that whole day and she's been fine ever since she's had one little little rough bout and we just didn't you know i mean it's funny how when the rough bout came because we already saw the 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 truth of the word okay that it didn't like set us back and we didn't just go okay well you know what i guess we missed it or it was like no we had the strength because we did believe right and because God did show us, and because, you know, he said, bless for those that believe and have not seen. Well, that's because they don't have to walk around suffering. Right, right, right. They, they grab a hold of the truth right from the beginning. They don't care if they get a de- demonstration. I'm a little thick. I needed a demonstration. Right, But But right. The, even, even the heavier issue in all of this is this. My mouth affected somebody else. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's, that's the thing that I think we need to focus on, is that my... My resigning myself to that, and you're gonna suffer, and that's the way it's gonna be, and that's the way it is, and yeah. blah 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 blah. I mean, it, 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 you know, I was even writing scenarios for her with my mouth of because of that, you're not gonna be able to do this, 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 yeah. and this, and this, and you know, I mean, you don't realize what a what a twisted up web you can weave with your mouth, and the fact that other people think, well, you know, what I say doesn't affect other people. What you say does affect other people. And sometimes the very people that you love the most that you don't want to see suffer are the ones that you speak the most negative stuff over. Right. Because you're like, well, you know, she's always been like that. Yeah. You know, that's just the way she is. She's just like her grandma. Her grandma's like that. She's like that. You know, and instead of speaking, you know, she's not her grandma. She's a totally different person. And she has the grace of God on her life just like the rest of us. And she's going to move in a whole different realm than her grandmother moved in. And she's not going to be bound by that. Okay, what if none of it made any difference? Mm -hmm. I'd rather err on the side of positive than err on the side of being the one putting uh, all this negative uh, stuff out there over people. Well, okay, so I want to 
yeah, that's good. So I want to kind of give the audience a little background as to how profound this was because your daughter suffered as I did for multiple years with this same recurring thing. And we're not talking about she suffered for uh, 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 six months, a year, and uh, all of a sudden you've got your mouth right and it disappeared. We're talking about multiple decades for me and multiple years for her and how God used this opportunity to really bring home profoundly how important how we what we say about a thing is. Now that said, I gave Susan some pushback because it was like, wait a minute, you mean to tell me it doesn't matter how well I live my life, it doesn't matter how well I talk in my life, it doesn't matter how much faith I have, how much work and faith I have, you mean to tell me that some knucklehead off somewhere miles away can negatively impact all of the good seeds that I'm planting in my life? And what did you tell me, Susan? I don't remember what I told you. Basically what you just said, that you can affect other people. Well, and, oh, I know what I did share with you is that I've been in times in prayer over issues that I just couldn't seem to get anywhere with. Mm -hmm. and, and I've had a couple times in my life where the Lord said, I want you to stop. And I want you to, to bind up, cast down the words that other people are speaking over you. Okay. He's had me bind up the effects of prayers that are being prayed over me. Wow. Because, you know, okay, so let's say, let's say I tell you that I'm going to Florida next week um, to, to hang out with a friend. Okay. And in your mind, you just, for some reason, you feel like I shouldn't go. Okay. It might be, it might be fear. You know, I don't, you don't like flying, so you don't want me flying or right. whatever. So you get on your knees and the first thing you start doing is praying. Okay. Dear God, don't let my sister blah, 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 blah. Okay. okay. All right. God doesn't ignore you because you're not praying right. Okay. I mean, you got to think about this. You're his child, okay. right? Okay. And and you have a relationship with the Lord, just like I do. Right. And you start praying, okay, this is what you're praying. And you're praying out loud, you're praying, okay. Lord, you know, she shouldn't go. I feel, you know, and I don't know why she's not listening and blah, 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 and, you know, whatever, whatever. Right. Okay. And that's absolutely the opposite of what, what God is telling me, okay. and I plan on going, and I'm praying and thanking him for the trip, and you're over there praying the, 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 the negative side of the thing, thinking that you're doing the right thing. Okay. Okay, so that's, that. I mean, you know, sometimes we have to stop and take a moment and clear the atmosphere. Okay. Okay, if you look at it like this, the spirit realm is the spirit realm, both evil and good in that spirit realm. Right. Satan exists in that realm. God exists in that realm. That's more real than this. Yes. But that's going on over there. Mm -hmm. Who are you feeding? Who who's whose camp are you supporting? Who's what side of the table are you eating from? Mm -hmm. And you got to look at it that way because you affect things in the spirit. Okay. I can I can remember when I was married to this man. And he was flipping out and throwing things. And I remember I was praying in my head. I didn't look at him. I didn't raise my hands. I didn't put, fold my hands. I didn't. I I knew to keep paying attention to him, or he'd get mad. Okay. So I'm focusing on him while he's whipping stuff around my head. Okay. And I'm just looking at him. Okay. I'm just looking at him. And all of a sudden he goes, "Yeah, and all that praying you're doing ain't gonna help either." <laughs> <laughs> Dangy. Okay. So I'm like, okay. Now I know that this man has demonic spirits. Right. Because He's all up he in your head. Yeah. But I'm praying to God. I wasn't praying to Satan. Right. Right. But you, you, you can't tell me that that my prayers to the Lord were not affecting things in the spirit realm. It wasn't hard for them to see the results of what my prayers were doing. Okay. Because not one thing that he whipped in my head hit me. Okay. And he never got a chance to escalate beyond throwing stuff around the room. He never got a chance to physically touch me right. ever in that whole relationship. Okay. And all I would do is worship the Lord in my head every time he went ballistic. All right. Okay. And, and the Bible says praise was still the enemy. Okay. So he knew, the, the demonic realm knew that I was praying, and they let him know that I was praying, and it came out of his mouth. Wow. 
Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, the reason I say, well, I know that he had a demonic spirit because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Right, right. If he didn't have, a, if, he did, if he wasn't that highly influenced by the demonic, he wouldn't have probably even heard, what well, been able to to understand what was going on or to, to say what he said. Right. That came out of his heart because his heart was being ruled and reigned by the enemy. Okay. And so that's why he was able to do that. An, an average Christian probably would never pick up on that. You wouldn't hear that coming out of their mouth. Right. Like, you just, you just, all that prayer ain't going to help you. Right, 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 like, right, right, okay. right, right. That, see, there's been times in my life where God's let me get like a reality check about the spirit realm and, and things that are going on over there. Um, I was raised up under a pastor who was a deliverance pastor who really understood a lot of this, and I learned a lot of this from him. But a lot of this stuff is because I've seen the reality of it for real in my life. I've seen it manifest. I I used to go by this lady that was sitting just to practice. I would go by this lady. I would drive by every morning on the way to work, lady sitting on the on the bench waiting for the bus. Mm-hmm. And she always looked really kind of evil looking in the face, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and she would talk to herself. So I said, oh, you know what? If I wonder if I if I every time I put up to this light and I start praying for her, I wonder if she'll if if they'll, if I'll see any difference. Right. Okay. And so that i had been doing this for months and months, driving there by her every day, blah, blah, blah. And so this day I said, okay, I'm going to pray. So I'm not praying out loud. My windows are up in my car. Right. I'm not praying out loud. And I'm just, you know, kind of praying under my breath, Lord, blah, 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 blah. I'm binding up them. I'm binding up them enemy, the Satan and blah, 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 blah. And that lady looked at me like took a bead on me with her eyes. What? And started oh my God. screaming profanity at me. I was like, okay, was that a coincidence? So next day, did the same thing. She did the same thing. She'd never done that before that. Okay, so, okay, so I hear that. Okay, so basically what we're talking about is the influence of our words. Um, That that you got good and evil. It's either going to influence evil or influence the positive. The good. Or the exactly, good. exactly. Okay. We, but see, the thing is, is we as Christians have the power to to break to bind that stuff off of ourselves. Okay. It's just that a lot of people don't know that they do. So I'm not, I don't walk around in fear or concerned that that you know, and I don't every day go. Oh, I'm covering myself, you know, so that this, blah blah blah. I don't do that every day, okay. and maybe I should. But when it's when I need to, the Lord lets me know. Okay. When I've done when I've done what I know I need to do, and things are not moving or changing, or I'm walking in faith and I'm not seeing seeing a change. Okay. Um, it perks my ears up to listen to the things that people around me are saying to me. Okay. Because people will say it right to, things to your face. Yeah, like, girl. Go, okay. Go, Tell that example. Tell that example of the lady you you were working in the restaurant. Oh my God. Tell them about that. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. So I had had pneumonia. I've been in the hospital. Had pneumonia come out of the hospital, my doctor told me that I had uh, COPD, which is uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Mm -hmm. It's not heart disease, but it's like you lose a capacity of your lungs and you always are going to be, you know, kind of on the low energy side because you're not getting the right amount of oxygen and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I read, I don't know, this is not typical me, but something rose up in me and I flat up rebuked my pastor right there. That my doctor right to her face. Whoa. I have never done that before. I mean, I rose up like it, it came out of me before I thought about it. What did you it. say? I said, how in the heck are you going to sit there and speak that over me when I just got out of the hospital with pneumonia yesterday? Right. And my lungs are still not clear and you're going to already tell me that I'm stuck the rest of my life not being able to breathe? Ooh. I think, I said, how? I said, even I logically know that that don't make no sense. Ooh, girl. Well, you know, blah, blah, blah. I said, no. Mm. So she shut up. Because okay. I was like, I was, I was like, she probably like, okay, this lady's losing that. Yeah. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Goodness. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be, they'll have, you know, you're always going to be reducing your capacity to breathe the rest of your oh, life. And goodness. we might have to put you on the inhalers and, 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 you know, I'm like, oh my gosh. So. Right. 
I leave there, and I, you know, a couple days later, I go back to work, and this lady there did have COPD, and she had it really bad, and she smoked like a fiend. Oh my! And I knew her parents, and both of them smoked themselves in the grave, but they uh, were Christians. They okay. loved the Lord. Yeah. They they were greeters at their church all the years. They were really sweet people, but both of them walk around with oxygen tanks in the end, would not quit smoking. Whoa! Could not get that monkey off their back. Right. Their mother died. Of, of from smoking herself to death. Whoa! So it went all the way back, as far as I know, at least to the great grandparents. Okay. Okay. So I had been dealing with this woman about that. I've been praying for her. I've been explaining to her that this thing was generational, and you know, and, and trying to give her some wisdom and try to help her to be the one that breaks that right. over her family. I said, "You got two daughters, and they both smoke like fiends," and you know. Yeah. So anyway, um, so this lady, um. She goes, well, how are you? And I said, I'm good. I'm good. And uh, um, I said, yeah. I said, I just got out of the hospital three days ago. And, the doc and I said, yeah, you know, my doctor had a nerve tell me I had COPD and blah, blah, blah. This lady's voice literally changed. Uh -huh. She goes, you might as well just accept it. You're going to be just like me every day I get up. And it takes me an hour to get my lungs cleared up just so I can get up and walk around. You know, this is just the life that you're going to have to live. You need to just resign yourself to it and accept it. Oh, man. And I'm like, wow, devil, you didn't even try to hide. <laughs> I mean, dude, you didn't even try to cloak or anything. You just come out with a bunch of lies and, and spewing that crap at me. I walked out of the out of the kitchen, out to the main floor. My best friend owned the restaurant, and she's a spiritual Christian. And I told her, I said, man, I just had a conversation with Satan. Oh. She goes, what? I said, I had a conversation with Satan face to face. She goes, huh? Where is he? I said, he's in the kitchen. She, goes, she walks around the corner. She looks in there, and she comes out. She looks, and she just says, is it so-and-so? Because the only person standing in there was the cook, the lady that did this. Yeah, yeah. And I said, yeah. She goes, you called her Satan? And I told her what happened. She goes, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. She goes, oh, no. She said, that definitely was not earthly. See, how many years ago was that, Susan? Oh, my goodness gracious. Seven, eight years ago? See, and you're doing just fine. Yeah, I mean, I've never had another person even mention it. Well, I, my doctors. I think this is a powerful subject. I guess I'm still struck. And everybody, so everybody knows this is just us talking like we usually do on the phone. Um, yeah. So I'm just struggling with to what degree is my life reflective of the negativities that others are saying? And to what degree is my life reflective of stupid mistakes I made or stuff I said against what God wants for me? How much of my life is that I'm not moving forward because God said not yet? And how much is all of that tied together? See, I don't want everybody to walk away and think that this is. That, you know, yeah, it's cut and dry, but the word says, yeah. yeah, but that, you know, that you're at the, I just cannot believe that me as a child of God sitting here, that I am at the whim of any negativity that's out there spoken about me. I think, Linda, that, that this is really, that you're bringing it up this way is really key. Because I believe that where your faith is, that's where you live. Mm -hmm. And I believe that when your faith is in certain places, things don't touch you like they that they, like they could. Okay. But most of us don't trust God nearly like we say we do. Okay. And I, you either believe that God controls your life and that he has you in his hand and that he's more than capable of dealing with everything that comes and nothing surprises him. Okay. Or you live in this kind of flux. Okay. Where it depends on what's going on with your life. And then, okay, now I'm feeling you, but I, then I don't believe. And I've spent years just not even telling people. God never told you to have faith for things or individual moments. Right. He said, have faith in me. And that's yes. why my whole focus has always been is just to have to trust him, to build my trust in him and not let it have anything to do with circumstances. Okay. So always pushing to have more trust, more relationship with him. That's always been my goal. My faith is in him, not in anything that I see around me. So that when things, when we go through the normal trials and tribulations, I don't go toss him under the bus mm -hmm. ever. It's like, 
whatever I'm going through, he knows. He's got me. I'm not I'm not going to come off of that. I don't move off of that, even if it's the worst situation like losing my sister. Right. He and I had some serious discussions. Yeah, child about did. why that child did not live. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We had some serious talks. Mm-hmm. And most people would have been like, "I'm leaving," because if the lightning hits, I don't want to get hit too. Right. I mean, I was real. Yeah. But that's because I have a relationship with him. Okay. And so I talk things through with him, and I know that he's got my back. And even in the midst of that, and I know I've told you this before, but I, um, I want the other people to hear this. And when my sister died, I would literally be sometimes so distraught and upset that, that he let her die that I would have to literally out loud with my mouth say, Lord, but I trust you. Right. I would have to literally say that to like come out of that dark place that I would want to go. I'd have to say that to keep from getting into the place where where I was letting my faith in God be eroded because I knew she wouldn't want that. And yeah. I knew that despite the circumstances, I've built myself up to know that no matter what I'm seeing, what I'm facing, he's got me. Right. And whatever I go through, he knows it. Right. And if I go through it, he allows it. And he, and even if he allows it, it's it's because of his love for me. Right. So I don't look at hard lessons and go, well, you know what? God could have spared me from that. I don't know what the problem is. No, I obviously needed to go through that and walk through that. Yeah, because Whether that brought you to another level of understanding with respect to how much control you have over stuff, how much control you don't have. And I think that what I'm hearing and what you said, the key thread that runs through all of that is we get caught up on what we can understand and our right. whole world crashes down based on what we don't understand. And we don't know a lot. Oh yeah. So you know. so you could look at that whole situation. I think that it was God the day that Judy called you and you all were talking and she said, Well whatever you going through that ain't about me. That's about you. That's yeah. about how you're dealing with this. Now she's the one facing death. Yeah. She had already made up her mind over a year before that that she's gonna believe in God till she take her last breath and whatever it be, it be. Yeah. And that she was at peace with all the decisions she made with respect to her treatment or not. And that she understood where everybody else was coming from, but she wasn't moving from where she was. Judy yeah. knew what treatment she was going to take or not. She understood the consequences of that or not. And just like the first round of surgery she went through and got the diagnosis, just like the last round of surgery she went through and got the diagnosis, her eyes were stayed on him. She was going to believe him for her healing, regardless of how that mess came through. And that's where she was. It was nothing I could could say, nothing you could say, nothing Crystal could say, nothing her daughter could say, nothing anybody could say was going to change where she was with that. Exactly. And so we we get caught up in how we're experiencing all of that to the point where we don't get it. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our paths. And that means that at some point we've got to relinquish that, okay, I don't get this mess. I ain't liking this mess. It's the same thing you told me about uh, my recent challenges with my educational funds. You know, at some point you're going to have to just say, Lord, I trust you, whatever. Whatever yeah. it's going to be, it's going to be. I've done everything I can do on this end. The rest is up to you, or and, and it's gonna have to be what you're gonna be. Have to be. Well, I got what. Well, I've got peace. That whole thing ain't changed. Everything I've done since you and I talked about it last, I did what I was supposed to do. Ain't a dang thing changed behind that. But guess what? I walk around here cleaning my house, planning a trip. I'm not sitting up worried about it because at some point you get a life lesson that teaches you. I ain't going to understand none, nothing hardly as long as I'm in this human mind. And just because I don't get it don't mean it doesn't make sense in the cosmos. Yeah. And that was a heck of a lesson you had to learn then. Back when I was 14 years old, he gave me that, that, that scripture about uh, trusting the Lord with all your heart 
and lead not to your own understanding because it was a minor thing like me trying to figure out, out how come I didn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, let me be more specific. Couldn't understand how come I couldn't talk in tongues. And back then, I was carrying my Bible to school and back. I'd read it on the bus to school on the way back. And I'll never forget that the day that he brought that to me, it basically said, give it a rest. Let it go. Quit worrying about it. And it wasn't long before I had the gift of speaking in tongues. So, uh, and so these are just... We have to get that conversation right there. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I... Trust that you will join us again for the continuing conversation regarding Say What. Until then, I'll catch you on the backside.